We'll start from the head and make our way down towards the feet. Let's begin. Auricular muscles. You know, we can't change the direction of our ears towards sounds like cats or dogs. This ability helps them recognize the direction of sound. Some of us could wiggle our ears, but this doesn't help us like animals. It doesn't serve any purpose. The auricular muscles of the ears are responsible for this wiggle. They surround both ears. Our ancestors were able to use them to detect the direction of incoming sounds. Darwin proposed, as we began to use our necks to capture the sound direction, these muscles lost their abilities, or, you can say, we eliminated their need. As evolution took place, these muscles have now become vestigial. Still, some people can wiggle their ears, which shows the traces of evolution. Plica semilunaris, aka third eyelid. If you observe the inner corner of your eyes, you will see a pink and reddish colored fold. This is called the plica semilunaris. This part looks similar to the nictitating membrane, or third eyelid of some animals like cats, reptiles, and birds, which works sideways like the sliding window. They use this nictitating membrane for the protection of the eyes and to keep them moist. Some speculate that we lost this ability because our eyes were less likely to get damaged during hunting and rivalry. So evolution eliminated that need. But somehow, if you could draw the third eyelid across your eye, you could swim underwater without wearing swimming goggles. But don't use that ability to scare children. Wisdom teeth. These are the teeth responsible for half of the appointments with the dentist. These wisdom teeth don't add value while chewing or even increase the appeal like the front teeth. Plus, you will end up treating the pain no matter how good your dental hygiene is. Our ancestors had larger jaws with extra space to hold more food. Their diet was mainly roots, nuts, leaves, and raw meat, which required more chewing and grinding. These wisdom teeth assisted them in those processes. As you know, they didn't have dental hygiene products or dentists losing or breaking the teeth was a great loss. These additional teeth were like insurance for them. As we evolved, our jaws became smaller, making those teeth shrink inside. Also, our diet changed as we evolved. These factors contributed to making wisdom teeth lose their function. Goosebumps. So, goosebumps are not an actual organ, but they are caused by a muscle known as the erector pili attached to hair follicles in the skin. Goosebumps are vestigial reflexes from our ancestors, which do not serve any significant purpose other than to feature in the horror Wattpad story of a newbie writer. In animals, for example, cats, this reflex causes their hairs to stand, which makes their size bigger in the eyes of predators. Our ancestors also had thick hairs all over body. Goosebumps served as a defensive tool and also isolated the body from the outside cold. Today's humans don't have hairs like our ancestors. Even if someone has that kind of hair, I have never seen someone wandering outside in the cold and goosebumping to keep themselves warm. Have you ever seen anyone? Men nipples. If we apply the same logic as before, does that mean our male ancestors could have been able to feed the baby? Absolutely no. As embryology tells us, the genetic sex of the embryo is determined at conception. In the early stages of embryonic development, Nipples develop along with structures common to both sexes. Following this, the sexual organs develop and differentiate based on the genetic sex. This means that nipples develop before the differentiation of sexual organs, regardless of gender. Also, female breast cells start developing in puberty, with hormones playing their role, while male nipples just stand still because their destiny is fulfilled. They rest in peace. Although male nipples have the same anatomy as female breasts, they are underdeveloped. I believe this is the one issue on which we, as males, can vote to keep them suppressed and underdeveloped. In some cases, men can get overdeveloped breasts. Even they can lactate in some cases. But my problem is that they named it galactorrhea, rhyming it with diarrhea. Why? Appendix the appendix is located in the lower right portion of the abdomen, near where the small intestine attaches to the large intestine. This is one of the well-known body parts of humans that is famous for not doing anything and infecting itself when it decides that it needs to grow in life. You may be surprised, 
but recent studies showed that the appendix has lymphoid cells, which help fight the infection. Scientists also said that it may contain good bacteria, which are useful when a person faces gastrointestinal issues. Still, this body part has more risk factors than benefits. Tailbone. As it sounds, the tailbone, or coccyx, was the part of the tail that our ancestors had. It helped them assisting their balance and mobility. In human primate, tail was also used to grab branches while swinging through the trees. Since humans evolved to walk on both legs, they lost the tail. Although tailbone provides weight-bearing support to a person in the seated position, but this isn't its primary function. Flat feet. A normal human foot has two arches, the longitudinal arch, running from front to back, and the transverse arch, running from side to side. These arches help to distribute body weight and absorb shocks. However, a few people are born with flat feet. These flat feet are not remnants of our ancestors like previous body parts. Flat feet can be caused by various factors, such as genetics, lifestyle effects, or developmental issues. In flat feet, the foot arches do not exist. This can increase the pressure on the muscles and tendons as they compensate for the lack of arch support. Flat feet can also reduce the ability of the feet to absorb shocks. So, if someone has flat feet, they typically expend more energy than those who have well-developed arches. That's enough for today's video. Bye.